Well, I decided to build a new controller for my CNC plasma cutter. It's a heavily modified Langwire Crossfire. Here is an AXBB-E motion controller that I used and I housed it all in this cheapo plastic case from Amazon that I painted black with this black bed liner. It turned out pretty good. I made the base plate for all the components out of some 1 8 inch aluminum, just some cheapo sheet non-6061 stuff that I found at the local metal supermarkets. It turned out really well actually. The holes uh, were 3 millimeters. I just kind of spotted them with a drilling operation. It's cut in these rectangular axis holes and the intention was to possibly use them to route some wire. You see me reaching my hand in there to grab that piece that fell. Here it is right off the cutter, both sides. I'm placing some components here just to kind of get a general idea of what the layout's going to look like. I decided to use 16 gauge sheet metal panels to fit the connectors and the various components on the sides and front and bottom of the controller. It's cutting the side panel right now where all the two and four pin connectors go, as well as the power connector and the ethernet connector. These panels turned out really well. I um, painted them with that same black bed liner paint and spaced out some three millimeter screws around all of the perimeters I have to say that bed liner paint is pretty amazing stuff. It sticks to any surface I've tried, uh, MDF, plastics, metals, without any prep work, and it stays on. A few years ago, I built a flight simulator cockpit using some PVC tube, and I used that bed liner to paint that, and it's been rock solid, no chips, um, bonded very well to the PVC. You know, I'm still in awe every time I see this thing cut. This has to be one of the coolest CNC machines I've ever built. It's also on the top of the list for one of the scariest machines I've ever built. I'm a really big fan of how quickly this cuts out parts that you can use, and I've got the dross to a very manageable level where it's usually able to just chip it off with a fingernail. It turned out pretty good. This is how it's going to be positioned on the controller. I use these laser cut templates to position the holes for the cutouts and the screws. This was the first hole I cut in the enclosure. I used some drilled holes and a handheld blade to get this shape out. It was slow going. I tried to leave myself a few extra holes for expansion, but Here's the connectors. I ended up using these cheap aviation connectors available on Amazon, four pin and two pin. I used the four pins on the steppers and the two pins for the inputs and outputs. Here's the connector I used to bring the ethernet into the control box to feed the AXBB-E motion controller. Here's the power socket with a rocker switch and a 10 amp fuse that I used. Here's a shot I took trial fitting the components in the box to get an idea of where I'm going to put the other panels. I went with a 24 volt exhaust fan and cut the panel for it out of 16 gauge sheet metal, used one of the laser cut templates to mark the holes and cut out the opening. I did a pretty good job on this one using the Milwaukee multi-tool. Here's a shot of the bottom template and you can see the holes I drilled to cut out the shape for the air vent. Uh, cut out a 16 gauge mild steel. Here's the front panel. I decided to put the Proma SD in the control box since I'm running the 50 to 1 voltage on it. The Proma SD is temporary. I'll be putting another THC in later. The other addition I added to this controller was a safety switch to manually be able to turn on the torch on and off relay. 
that's the nice thing about using these removable panels is I can make a change, cut a new panel, put new components on, and it's relatively simple. Here I've sped up the cutting of the main panel here to like six times the normal speed. We'll make you sit through watching all those holes get uh, drilled at normal speed here. Just amazed to see how uh, well this cuts the 16 gauge. No dross on it at all. I think I'm gonna flip it over here in a second, there we go. All the discoloration on the back I think is from the, the cutting fluid. It's pretty dirty and uh, it's kind of sticking to the back. It just wipes off with a rag though, so left a pretty clean surface underneath. One thing I noticed I didn't have quite right was my uh, inside cornering on the holes there for the Proma SD cutout you can see on that panel. There, three of the corners were really rounded. I had to come back and hit those with a file to square them up. And here's the finished panel. I think it turned out pretty good. Here's the inside of the panel. You can see I'm holding the Proma in with some DIN rail there and a couple of really long bolts. Here's the first power on I did of the controller. Luckily, no smoke. Everything seemed to be fine, and it was. Fan spinning nicely. It does a good job of exhausting the hot air out the top and sucking the cool air in through the bottom vent. Just checking everything out there. I had to set that main power supply to 36 volts to supply the power to the steppers. The other power supply in the middle is 24 volts for all the uh, inputs and outputs. And the small power supply is 5 volts. I'm using that uh, to power the AXBB. Now I'm making some mounts here for the top and bottom of the controller to mount it to the uh, crossfire leg. This is 11 gauge mild steel. They match the holes on the back of the controller, the top two and the bottom two. One of the mounts here has a longer leg and I believe it's this one. And uh, the uh, leg sticks out past the side edge of the control box and I use that to mount the water switch for the Omic probe. I just love watching this thing cut. It's so satisfying. Kind of like when I had my first 3D printer, it was really cool just watching it lay down the layers. This happens so much faster with the parts, you get instant gratification. I love it. It's actually pretty cool here too. I'm using the old controller to help build all the parts for the new controller. And here's how it mounts up. It uh, There's the top mount and I'm using a clamp to hold it in place so I can get a center punch, drill it in, and here it's mounted up. I'm using UCNC to run this new controller. So far, I like it, works good. Here's all, all the templates I used to cut out all the holes and the Milwaukee multi-tool that I used to cut the holes. The power supply, the 24 volt, this is the adjustable one that I set to 36 volts to power the steppers. Here's the five volt one I used to power the control board and the stepper drivers and an eight port relay module. And this DIN rail kit worked out really great first time I've used one. The rocker switch for turning on and off the torch relay. And here's some bonus footage of the bandsaw table I made cutting out of quarter inch steel with this is the first time I've used the 65 amp consumables I have the water level at which I think is pretty high I emptied out the tank anyway that's as much water as I had in there so I'm cutting out the slot for the table here it's going to come back and cut out the outline now for the rest of the table I think it measures about um, roughly around 12 inches wide by I think 10 inches in depth. Cuts pretty fast here at 65 amps, but uh, as I find out after, it uh, 
left some marks on the table. The slag was dropping straight down, red hot from the cut and landing on the bottom of the water table. Uh, I didn't think this would be an issue, but it um, actually heated the uh, bottom of the table up enough that it left all of these marks that you're gonna see coming up here in a picture. Yeah, so that's a bit scary. You can see here all the slag just dropped right down onto the table. Luckily, no damage to the water pan. If I use the 65 amp again, I'm going to put down some uh, pieces of ceramic tile that I cut to fit in between the slats just to uh, protect it from the slag falling down and overheating the bottom of the water pan. Kind of scary, especially since I've got my electronics under there, so I have to make sure I mitigate for that in the future. Anyhow, thanks for watching. I'll leave some links to the components I used in the description. Please like and subscribe if you like the video. I'll see you next time.